Friends, welcome to our service. Today is a special day. Often it's considered the birthday of the Christian church. It's Pentecost Sunday, the day that we celebrate the, the movement of the Holy Spirit in our lives. I'm glad that you can be with me, even if it is over electronic lines, uh, but, uh, and today we're going to be serving communion, so if you would like to join in, but don't yet have communion elements with you, please feel free to pause the video and go get some and uh, come back. And I thank Sheila for setting us up here today with, with the juice and the Pentecost banner. And, uh, and um, please, as we, uh, as we light our candle, let us join together in worship. And please join me in prayer. Gracious God, we come together as people of your spirit. We are different in personality, in background, in age, and in status, but we worship as one. We have different needs, different fears, and different hopes, but we know that God is here for us. We are aware of crying injustice, unequal wealth, and loneliness, but we are determined to be your workers for good. We are of different faith in church background and spiritual gift, but we find inspiration in Jesus, the Holy One who taught us to pray to you, who is our mother and our father, who art in heaven. Hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. And our next hymn, or our opening hymn for today, if you would like to join in in singing, is Breathe On Me, Breath of God. cycling. I love to get out of the city and go out onto the, the country roads and go for long meandering rides enjoying the freedom of zipping along under my own power. When I, when I was going to first move to the prairies from the mountainous Vancouver area, I admit to a little bit of excitement. No more hills! Well, that excitement was short-lived because as many people who don't live here don't understand, Saskatchewan isn't actually flat. Also, sure, there may not be mountainsides to climb, but oh my goodness, give me a mountain if it will just block that wind. Wind can be really annoying, not only if you're just a cyclist, but if you're out for a walk and you have to go home and brush the grit out of your teeth, or watching all the plum blossoms blow off my tree before they've had a chance to be pollinated. And if you've lived in a place with hurricanes or tornadoes, 
Wind has the power to cause justifiable terror. Does it seem strange then that today, the day of Pentecost, one of the symbols we use for the Holy Spirit is wind? In our reading today, we have the followers of Jesus hiding away. It's festival time and they're not feeling safe. It's likely that the Roman and temple authorities are trying to clean up the rest of the threat that they perceived from Jesus and his followers. But then this happens, what we read about in Acts. When the day of Pentecost had come, they were all together in one place. And suddenly from heaven there came a sound like the rush of a violent wind and it filled the entire house where they were sitting. Divided tongues as of fire appeared among them and a tongue rested on each of them. All of them were filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other languages as the Spirit gave them ability. Now there were devout Jews from every nation under heaven living in Jerusalem and at this sound the crowd gathered and was bewildered because each one heard them speaking in the native language of each. Amazed and astonished, they asked, are not all those who are speaking Galileans? And how is it that we hear each of us in our own native language speaking about God's deeds of power? All were amazed and perplexed, saying to one another, what does this mean? But others sneered and said, they are filled with new wine. But Peter, standing with the eleven, raised his voice and addressed them, people of Judea and all who live in Jerusalem, let this be known to you and listen to what I say. Indeed, these are not drunk as you suppose, for it is only nine o'clock in the morning. No, this is what was spoken through the prophet Joel. In the last days it will be, God declares, that I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh, and your sons and your daughters shall prophesy, and your young ones shall see visions, and your elders shall dream dreams. Even upon my slaves, both men and women, in those days I will pour out my spirit, and they shall prophesy. I know we often get the expectation that these are happy stories from the Bible where everyone is smiling and polite, and, and if this was produced by Hollywood, all of the people from Palestine would be speaking with a British accent. But I don't think this is the case. I think this would have been terrifying and chaotic. Imagine if you were one of these followers. You're in a locked room and suddenly there's a violent wind blowing. Fire is floating above your heads. And do you really think they'd be, react by saying, oh, look at me, I can suddenly speak every language? No, this would have been terrifying. And along with all of this, they're now getting a ton of attention from the very people from whom they've been hiding. This wind is blowing disruption. So maybe this is a very good image for God's spirit. Like the spirit, the wind can be disruptive. It cannot be tamed. It blows where it wants, when it wants. I think the wind is also a good metaphor for how we interact with God. We can tap into that energy, but we can't control it. Think of the wind as God's call to us. Can we resist it? Sure. When, on, when, when I'm on my bicycle, I can gear down and push harder for a little while, but it's sure going to make my life more difficult. It would be so much easier if I just surrendered to the wind and turned my bike and maybe my life around. And if I fight the wind, will, I, will it eventually give in and turn to my back and push me along? No. If I choose to fight the wind, I have to live with those consequences. That's not to say that the wind or God's spirit is indifferent to us. There's a reason this is seen as the birthday of the Christian church. That spirit blew into the hearts of each of those followers. 
The tongues of fire rested on them, alighting their hearts and minds. This wind was a call for them to be the church and to make sure that through them all people would learn the life-saving message of the gospel. And I do mean all people. There's a reason they were able to speak all languages at once. God's call to his followers and to us if we choose to be included in the communion of Christ is one that, like the wind, cannot be tamed or domesticated. We cannot limit the spirit by our own understandings, likes, priorities, or biases. When we follow Christ, when we answer the call of the spirit, there is absolutely no room for racism or homophobia. We can't limit our call to our opinion of the right kind of person with the right kind of gender or skin color or nationality or income level or tradition. We can fight against it and choose to live the way we have always lived without disruption to our cycles of hatred and violence and greed and intolerance. Or we can feel the wind on our faces, feel the presence of God enter our hearts, let that tongue of fire burn away the chaff of our complacency and then join in with the disciples from 2,000 years ago in the ongoing work of building God's realm where every person, every animal, every rock, tree, and yes, even the wind is seen as a part of God's Holy Spirit. Please join in in singing Spirit of Gentleness. and free. 
captive dream dreams on women's visions on men clear their eyes with bold new decisions your people Whenever we serve the sacraments in this church, one of the things that we often do is to share the peace of Christ. Now, we can't do that as normal today. We can't shake each other's hands, give each other hugs, look each other in the eye. But we can trust that when we offer the peace of Christ, God will carry that message from our own homes into the world to land wherever that message may need to land. And so I offer you the peace of Christ. May the peace of Christ be with you. I would also invite you to join in our communion liturgy, which I will print on the screen for you to read along, and, uh, and then we will share in the feast. So, may the Holy Spirit be with you. Lift up our hearts. We lift our hearts in prayer. Let us give thanks to God. It is good to give God thanks and praise. Please join me in prayer. Holy God, we pray that our hearts be open to the movement of your spirit. We pray that we are able to set aside our desire to tame you to our own biases and desires, but instead let you be beyond all that we can imagine. Your love is not limited to our love. Your forgiveness is not limited to our ability to forgive. The capacity to embrace all creation is not limited to the length of our own arms. Call us to live lives beyond our own imaginations and have faith that as, we, as with you as our guide, rather than our limited expectation, so much more is possible. We pray for all those affected by this ongoing pandemic. We pray for those who are suffering from isolation and frustration. We pray for those without the security of saving plans, pensions, and employers who can afford to maintain staff. We pray for those workers who we've discovered are essential. The clerks, the drivers, the people that tend our roads and pick up our garbage. We pray for healthcare workers who put their lives at risk for a population that so often can't be bothered to take simple precautions. As we move into Pride Month and as we witness rioting and unrest south of the border, we pray for those who are persecuted for the way they were born. Let your spirit blow hatred from our hearts, ignorance from our minds, and fear from our bellies. Let all people know that there is only one people, your people, your children, and that to faithfully follow in your way, for us to survive as a species, we must see each other as neighbor. As we share this meal, may we take a bit of your spirit. May we be nourished so that we may nourish the world, answering your call, adding our own breath of love and renewal to the blowing of your spirit. Amen. A long time ago, Jesus gathered with his friends to share a meal, a meal that would remind those followers that Jesus was going to be with them forever and ever. And so if you have a loaf of bread, I invite you to break it with me in the same way that Jesus broke that loaf of bread so long ago. This is not just simple bread, but this is a reminder that even in our brokenness, 
we have nourishment to share. If you have something to drink, please, I invite you to pour it with me. For a very long time ago, Jesus was willing to pour out his own life so that the message of the gospel could be delivered. Because these words are so crucial to who we are as people. Not only as followers of God, but just as human beings. The message that we are in this together, that we are neighbors, that my good depends on your good, is what is going to pull us from this fire. The meal is served. All are invited. Please join in the feast. <laughs> same Spirit of God that blew through those disciples so long ago blows through you and me and our neighbors everywhere around the world. Let that wind lead you to hope, love, and peace. Amen. <laughs>